If you take three steps back, a lot of what's happening around the world seems like an attack on Christianity. Thanks to the neocon project, virtually the entire ancient Christian population of Iraq was eliminated. The U.S. government, under several presidents, has funded effectively the killing of Christians in Syria. And this continues throughout the Middle East and in Eastern Europe. In Ukraine, the most obvious example. The Ukrainian government has now banned an entire Christian denomination. And virtually no one in the United States has said anything about it. We thought it would be worth learning more. Bob Amsterdam is an attorney representing that denomination. He joins us now. Mr. Amsterdam, thank you very much uh, for coming on. Explain, if you would, to people who haven't been following this, what's the denomination, what's its status now, and why? The Ukrainian Orthodox Church is the home of orthodoxy in Ukraine. It's been around for a thousand years. Five years ago, the Ukrainian government, in its wisdom, set up uh, what is called an autocephalous church, an independent church, independent of Russian, any connection to Russian canons, and decided that that church should replace the spiritual home of Ukrainians. That church, called the OCU, has been engaged in an absolutely vicious, unlimited campaign to uh, steal uh, property, harass, intimidate, and, and jail clerics, uh, force conscription on believers, uh, act in a manner that is, is almost unbelievable in a civilized society. And they'll use the excuse that this church, which by the way, completely separated from Moscow in May of last year, is somehow connected to the Russian FSB. But based on the testimonies uh, I've reviewed, there seems to be little substance to this allegation. And in fact, there are other institutions in Ukraine, like the secret police, who have been far more infiltrated by Russia than this particular church. Yet there is a reason for it, and it's a sad reason. The politicians in Ukraine, including perhaps the president, want to take the populist vote of those behind this new church and therefore feel it is in their political interest to destroy this ancient branch of Christianity. And, and, and I absolutely can tell you that the, the damage that has been visited on the leadership of this church, including five-year jail sentences for 75-year-old clerics, just astound you that in the 21st century, a country that wants to join the EU would ban a religion, let alone an ancient Christian form of that religion. And, and moreover, a country whose functions of government and national defense are effectively solely funded by the United States taxpayer. So the, I think Americans have an interest in this. And if you ask Christian leaders in this country, and, and I have, Shouldn't we be concerned when the Ukrainian government, which we're all for apparently, is banning a Christian denomination? They just say, well, no, they're not really Christians, they're Russian agents. If you could respond to that well, in a little more detail. You know, I'd be happy to, because firstly, I carry no water for Putin. I'm banned from Russia. I defended one of Putin's biggest enemies. And it is very hard for this particular branch to obtain counsel because people are so afraid of being connected to Russia. We have mobilized so much hate and animosity towards Russia uh, that it is, it is completely obscene. And there is a, a huge PR ban on saying anything that is critical of the Ukrainian government or President Zelensky. And as a result of that, we fail to understand the context of internal Ukrainian affairs. And the, the Russian connection, the allegation of FSB uh, connections, were it to be true, the evidence against uh, these four uh, metropolitans would be substantive, and yet they're, they're painfully inadequate. Uh, the charges of one metropolitan who has 400 children he's adopted 
relates to hurting the feelings of other Christians or other denominations. I mean, these charges are on their face, political charges. So as, as an attorney who's operated in a bunch of different countries over m many decades, um, and you know, I, I would encourage people watching this to look up uh, your resume, I, I, I think it speaks for itself, um, you're not an agent of the Russian government. Uh, how, it seems to me that it's, it's like prima facie unacceptable for a so-called Western liberal government to ban a religious denomination. It, I thought that was a traditional red line. If you're doing that, by definition, you're authoritarian. Am I missing something? Tucker, not at all. There is no basis under the Ukrainian constitution or under international law or the laws of war or Ukraine's own resolution in terms of limited rights during the war for the, begin for, for the banning of a religious denomination. And, you know, on our Departures podcast that we have, we actually have a lengthy interview where we explain all of this. This goes beyond anything acceptable. It's a violation of the EU charter. It's a violation of the Copenhagen criteria that the Ukraine would have to satisfy to enter the EU. This has nothing but a, a Tammany Hall local political logic. And I have to tell you, frankly, I'm a, I'm a Jewish person. I do not understand how it is that Christian leaders are not up in arms because I think their silence on Ukraine is dangerous for Christian denominations throughout the world. And I'll tell you, part of the reason I'm doing that is because of my concern for Christian brothers and sisters and, and what it means for them that, that we see raids on churches, we see violence, we see balaclava-covered individuals beating clergy, kidnappings. It is completely shocking. The UN has spoken out. German experts on orthodoxy is, have spoken out. Many Orthodox denominations don't recognize the, quote, new state church that the Ukraine have set up. And it is shocking to me that a country such as the United States with, with strong Christian leadership, I thought, could allow this to go on. Because what the Ukrainians try to tell you is that it's the same religion, this OCU state church is the same religion. But in fact, my clients, the the church I represent, their prayers are in church Slavonic. Their liturgy is different. And, and I can tell you, as, as somebody who is not a youngster, were somebody to come into my church or synagogue and change the language and change the leadership, I would be horrified. Yeah. There's nothing more intimate than one's relationship to his God. And this intervention for callous political purposes is unacceptable and it is shameful that not only Christian but all leaders of all denominations have not spoken out against the Ukrainian government. Well it does seem a little weird that it falls to a Jewish lawyer from the U.S. to defend a Christian denomination and bless you sincerely bless you for that but where is Russell Moore the editor of Christianity Today where is the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell a purported Christian. I mean, they're Look, backing this. What is that? Do you have any theory as to why this is happening? Yes, yes. The Ukraine lobby is immensely powerful. And uh, there is a humongous ban on truth right now in the United States with respect to what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, many of our leaders in the United States aren't even hearing this. It's the same in Europe. You cannot get through the, the massive uh, PR machine that the Ukrainians have put together. And, you know, I'm on their side. I, I am absolutely pro-Ukraine in terms of the devastation they've suffered as a result of the yes. war. But why that is being channeled against my clients, the Holy Synod, men who are dedicated to God, and their, their followers, who, let me be frank, are the most devout part of the Ukrainian populace. Why these innocents are being persecuted in this way is, is beyond my comprehension. Probably because they are the most devout. 
I, I have to say there's so few people of principle left in our public conversation, and you're uh, demonstrably one of them. Grateful for what you're doing and for telling us about it. Mr. Damstam, thank you very much. Thank you. Young here, people say the news is full of lies. And Kennedy's motorcade. 239 people sell the death of Jeffrey Epstein.